Okay, in this video we're going to assemble the gripper. Uh, so to do that, you need uh, these printed parts, which are the top and the bottom half. You need the left and the right gripper finger, the links, and then also the gears. You also need the servo. I've cut the tail off already. That's going to get wired on later. And then we also need some set screws. These are 10, 16s, and 20s. Uh, and then we just need the regular M3 Allen key, uh, and then also a, a screwdriver as well. So the first thing you want to do is you want to put the um, uh, nuts in the nut traps, which are on uh, all the individual parts. So these are quite easily put in by just sticking them in there. Depending on your printer, you may have to push them in harder or they may sit in loosely. As long as they don't turn and spot, then you're okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take a look at how this is going to be assembled. So what's going to happen is when this is put together, we're going to have these two gears. One's going to be actuated by the servo and it's going to move like this in order to move the gripper around. So this gear's got two holes in it, and that's because this gear is meant to be the one that attaches to the servo. So it's gonna be going on this side, and this one is gonna be going on this side. So, in this little bag of fun parts, you're gonna find a whole bunch of different things. Now right now, the only things we need in here are uh, two of the uh, small screws. Uh, so these screws, uh, the nice thing about them is that they're going to uh, cut themselves into the plastic really nicely. And then we also need this circular piece. All of these pieces attach to the back of the servos, just like this. And if you were to use any other type of servo, it would work as well, because all of these pieces are the same size. So I'm just going to get these all out of here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to take this and put it on the back of here. So, once this is assembled, this is going to go on here, and that's going to be where the servo rotates the gear from. So, what we want to do first is put two screws in any of the surrounding four, uh, in any of the surrounding holes. Now, the one thing that you want to make sure is that the holes are across from each other. So, once you've put the screws in part way, you can have them each sticking out a little bit on either side. This will help you install it. So then what you want to do is you want to line it up uh, with these two screws. Again, the direction that you line it up like this doesn't matter at all. That we're going to align later with the servo. And then we're going to screw these in. Okay, so once you're done, the two screws will be in there. Now they don't actually have to be pushed screwed in all the way. What you'll notice is that they're very difficult depending on um, your printer. So if you've, you've printed the holes really tightly, um, these screws may be harder to go in. So now let's take a look at how this is going to be assembled. So this is going to go here, and then the servo is going to clip in the back, and then now this is going to rotate from the servo. So we can take that aside for now. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, put uh, the links and these, and we want to attach them all to the fingers themselves. So with these, the links are going to be going on top. You'll have to make sure that all of the material has been printed out. These ones have just been uh, quite freshly printed. So these are going to be going on the back here. And then here. Now generally the idea is with the nut traps we always keep them facing down just because we don't want them visible we just want the top of the screws in this case visible. Now this again is going to be on the bottom so that means that this piece needs to be over here and then this one needs to be here. Now these will get lined up later once we put it in. So we want to start with the uh, 16 millimeter M3s and we're going to screw those in all the way. I want you to jump like you trying to get stuck in the air. If you feel so lit and don't care. Shorty beat in the face in the mare. Up in the air. I want you to jump like you trying to get stuck in the air. If you feel so lit and don't care. Shorty beat in the face in the mare. Up in the air. I want you to jump. Okay, so now we have uh, both of these put together. Uh, so the next thing that we want to do um, is we want to uh, pin them all together through uh, this thing. 
Um, and that way we can assemble this on the other side. And the last thing that we're going to worry about is the servo. The servo can come off and be put on at any time. Uh, so these two center ones we're not going to be using at all. Uh, and in these holes, these are the ones that are going to be used for the final joining. Uh, those are going to be the 20 mill mill millimeter screws that are going to be used in there. Uh, so I'll put those ones in first just because they're the longest. Okay, so we have these put all the way through. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip that over and then we'll correspondingly flip these guys over as well. These will go onto here and onto here. Again, you can see that my fit is really, really tight and I can't push them on much further than that. Um, and that's okay. Now that one I got on. So in order to get that further down, I'm just gonna tighten the screw and the threads on the screw and the uh, uh, striation of the 3D printing will just feed it uh, straight through uh, without any problem. And I'm not putting much force at all on this screw. Um, and the gripper will move just fine. Okay, so now you can see we have most of the gripper assembled. And what you can see is this gear uh, on the opposite side now. Um, if you can, you can kind of move it roughly like this, just to see how it works. Um, but it's not gonna hold itself together very well until we actually have the servo connected. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to assemble this. Uh, and to do so, um, I'd recommend uh, flipping it, seeing if any of these fall out. Those are gonna be the ones you wanna assemble first, just so that you don't have to screw around too much with them. So we're going to line it up on the back like this. Again, the screws may not all fit through right away at the first try. Um, so we're going to screw them together and it's going to pull the whole model uh, together. Now what you may have to do is if your screws are uh, very tight in the hole like mine, is you're going to have to uh, screw them in in parts. So you're going to have to uh, do a few turns on one and a few turns on the other just to make sure that it goes together lost a screw, uh, that it goes together on the right angle and that it's not uh, stressing it too much. And that way you might bend or break the parts uh, if you don't put it together like that. Okay, so once we have it done, um, oh, I'm gonna do one more here. Now you'll notice that we can move the claws together. Now this still isn't being held in place, it's just kind of floating around in here. You'll notice it moves around a lot. Um, so these two screws here, we don't need to tighten those yet. Those are gonna be tightened later, and it's gonna clamp on the shaft of the uh, six axis stepper. Um, so one of the things we just want to make sure is that this is seated in here properly, fully inside the hole. So for this next step, we want to understand how servos work. So we're going to grab this thing and we're going to put it on the end of here. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to rotate the servo manually just to see how it moves. So now the servo, what you'll notice is it stops there, so it doesn't rotate any further. So we'll put this on flat now. Now it's perpendicular with the servo, and what you'll notice when we rotate it is it rotates about uh, a little over, uh, or about 270 degrees is what this servo is rotating. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that when we put the servo together, uh, that we're not overdoing it. Um, just because then the, maybe the gripper's not gonna close all of the way. Um, so in order to do that, let's think about the servo as it is placed upside down. So we're gonna rotate it all the way in one direction now for the, for the gripper to close, the servo is gonna to have to rotate this way. So that means we're maxed out like this. So essentially the way we're doing it now is no good. So we'll rotate it all the other way around, maybe take off a bit of slack, and that'll prevent the gripper from hurting itself later. 
And now what we can do is we can place the servo onto the back here, like so, and we can put screws into these holes. Now for the screws into these holes, we can use these M3 ones, or we can also use these screws which we use to assemble the gripper. It just depends on, oh, we lost the nut. Uh, it just depends on uh, what screws uh, you have available, and also uh, if you want to keep the gripper lighter, you can use these screws just to reduce the weight slightly. Um, so now we're gonna put these screws in the back, And now we have our completely assembled gripper, which is going to close all the way. So you can feel and hear as we rotate it. What you'll notice is the gripper is also very stable. So these do not rock and move around as I try and put some force on them. And then when I close the gripper, they also don't move on those extremes either. Now this gripper does work very, very well um, as far as 3D printed grippers go. Um, and actually just as far as grippers go in general, um, it doesn't have the strength of a pneumatic gripper, um, but it does uh, have the ability to be adjusted to different sizes, which is really cool. One of the downsides to a servo motor though, is that we can't do force feedback. So for example, if we're grabbing an object of an unknown size, we aren't able to grab that object, let's say a screwdriver, and the servo is going to try to keep closing. So we can't do that with the servo, which is one of the downsides, but we also can't do that with stepper motors very well. We'd have to use uh, a DC gear drive or something like that. So that's how you assemble this stepper motor. Uh, sorry, that's how you assemble this gripper motor, uh, gripper. Um, and then to assemble it later, uh, this is going to clamp onto the back of uh, that other axis. Uh, the sixth axis. Um, yeah, so thank you very much.